Hey, my name is Russ Garand, um, and what I have been learning about recently um, is assessment and grading. I've been trying to figure out the best ways to assess my students to help them learn more and the best ways to um, grade them and report out that grading uh, to kind of get out of the way, get grading out of the way, break down some of the barriers that um, points-based systems and averaging and um, zeros and throwing behavior into in the middle of grades, uh, just trying to get all that stuff out of the way. Here's a couple of resources I can give to you. Um, first one is Ken O'Connor's book, How to Grade for Learning. Uh, second one is um, uh, Bob Marzano's book, Formative Assessment and Standards-Based Grading. Um, so those are just two ways that you can learn some more about this kind of stuff. I guess the 10 seconds left here, I just want to challenge you to think about um, just, just actually dig into and think about your current assessment and grading practices. Why do you do them? What could you do to make them better? Hey there, my name this is Steve is a Johnson, demonstration known of as Flip for Mac. Steve, I guess in the Twitter world. And I'm going to share with you some, what we're doing at our school, some things that we're trying to learn from. Um, I've got, I work at a school, a middle school, in Concord, North Carolina, Jay and Freeze Middle. And what we're doing is we're really starting to get into multiple intelligence theory. And so what I'm trying to do is put together a kind of a pre-test and a post-test. The point is really to try to figure out uh, how, how we can have conversations about growth. This is a demonstration of Flip for Mac. Board. And so at the beginning of the year, we'll uh, get the kids to take a, a multiple intelligence quiz, give them a profile of what they're strong in and weak in. Uh, give them a chance to talk about you know whether or not that represented them as well as they thought that it would and then we're doing it again at the end of the year um, st students and teachers so we can see and try to map out okay did this class grow in this certain way you know did this class grow musically uh, this is a demonstration of flip for Mac class. see if we can find some patterns and start some conversations about well, how did that grow in that class? Did that teacher happen to do a lot of things with music? Uh, did that teacher themselves have an affinity for that? And really it's just a way to kind of dive deeper into how to connect to kids' passions and how to connect that to their learning environment and think about how we can better serve kids. And so it's been a real fun learning process. Um, it's really neat to look at this and really think about why these things this are This is a demonstration get the kids of Flip to talk for Mac. About it and connect that way. So that's what we're learning, and uh, hope you guys have a good rest of the day. I'm learning to help teachers more focus on the learning when it comes to technology tools in the classroom. Sometimes we get wrapped up a little too often in the glitz of the tool or what the tool doesn't do, or uh, the tool might be too hard for students to use. We get too wrapped up in that. I read a post this morning from Bill Ferreter called, It's About the Verbs, Not the Tools. Um, so we need to be focusing on what these technology tools enables our students to do because all too often students, we know students are really great consumers with technology. Uh, we need to be helping students to be producers with technology and giving them a wide variety of tools that enable them to do that successfully to demonstrate learning. Hi, my name is Brian Harrison. I'm an elementary vice principal in York Region, just north of Toronto. Right now I'm learning how to use student data, specifically academic and dispositional data, to help inform our school planning process and to help our teachers understand how to incorporate that student need into the planning process at the classroom and at the school level. It's fun stuff. And I'm enjoying the learning. Okay, we're working on learning how to build a hideout in your closet. A really great hideout. And everybody knows that if you have a hideout, you have to have a secret knock to get in, right? Who is it? Zombies. Password. Oh, cool. Can I come in? Yeah. Okay. Um, you need to play down. This um, stuff um, is a I complex. Need to get what? <laughs> Something I've been learning lately is is how to build an ebook. I'm doing my first ebook, um, a little project I built on my sabbatical, and I'm learning about all of the uh, design limitations and restrictions of 
of that format, but all, also taking advantage of all the affordances. I've run into all kinds of problems and issues pulling it together, and I've, I've had to draw on a lot of people um, uh, to try and develop workarounds on those. So it's really been an exciting thing, and I hope I end up with a project that I can then port out and um, use with my students so that they can build their own e-publications. For now, I've got a book. I'll be making it available to you and everybody else for free pretty soon. 